and the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, IPCC, has published its contributions to the sixth assessment report on the physical science basis of climate change. In this report, Arise correspondent Leila Johnson-Salami highlights the key takeaways. The latest UN report on climate change highlights the reality and severity of climate in our present day. These are some of the key takeaways. Number one, humans are completely to blame. According to the IPCC, undoubtedly, human influence has warmed the atmosphere, ocean, and land. In the past decade, concentrations have continued to increase, and humans continue to contribute to changes in precipitation, the global retreat of glaciers, sea level rises, and changes in the land biosphere. Number two, things are getting extreme. The global surface temperature has increased faster since 1970 than in any other 50-year period over at least the last 2,000 years, and all regions of the world are expected to experience further effects of this. Hot extremes have become more frequent since the 1950s, and according to the report, every decade we now experience the kind of heat wave that used to happen only once every 50 years. If the world warms by another degree Celsius, this could shift to twice every seven years. Number three, many climate changes are irreversible. Human activities affect all major climate system components, with some responding over decades and others over centuries. According to the report, greenhouse gas emissions since 1750 have committed the global ocean to future warming, and changes to the global ocean temperature are irreversible. Oceans absorb most of the excess heat from greenhouse gas emissions and hit the warmest level in recorded history in 2019. Mountain and polar glaciers are also predicted to continue melting for decades to centuries. The IPCC concluded that continued ice loss over the 21st century is virtually certain for the Greenland ice sheet and likely for the Antarctic ice sheet. Number four. We are now estimated to cross 1.5 degrees Celsius of global warming in the 2030s. Unless there are immediate and effective actions taken to reduce carbon emissions, according to the report, the world will reach the 1.5 degrees Celsius global warming limit agreed by signatories to the Paris Climate Change Agreement in the next two decades. A rise of 1.5 degrees Celsius is generally seen as the most that humanity can cope with without suffering widespread economic and social loss. Number five, the only way to limit global warming is by achieving net zero carbon emissions. A global net zero is a balance between the greenhouse gases put into the atmosphere and those taken out. To reach net zero emissions by 2050, annual clean energy investment worldwide will need to more than triple by 2030 to about $4 trillion. While net zero carbon emissions is a critical longer term goal, big emission cuts, especially by the largest greenhouse gas emitters, are key in the next five to 10 years in order to keep global warming to no more than 1.5 degrees Celsius and safeguard our environment. It's important to understand that most emissions come from just a few countries. 10 states alone contribute to 68% of greenhouse gas emissions. China, the USA, the EU, Russia, India, Japan, Brazil, Indonesia, Iran, and Canada. This report highlights the reality of our world today, a code read for humanity as described by the Secretary General of the United Nations. And if the world continues on its current course, temperatures could rise by 2 degrees Celsius by 2060 and 2.7 degrees Celsius by the end of the century. And even if emissions are slashed in the next decade, Average temperatures could still be up 1.5 degrees Celsius by 2040 and 1.6 degrees Celsius by 2060 before stabilizing. Leila Johnson Salami, Arise News. For more on the global climate change, we are now joined by Arise correspondent Leila Johnson Salami. Hello, Lovely Leila. to be here with yeah, you both as always. You. Good afternoon, Akana and yes. Aaron. How are you both today? We're doing good. Oh, I love you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> it's good to see you from this other side this time around. Oh, say that again? It's good to see you from this other side. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, get us straight into the issue now. Um, extensive report, I must say. Good work on covering this climate change. Now, talk to Ross. In the immediate, in the immediate, what should we be wary of and what can we do to stop this and nip it in the bud? 
The answer to that is very simple. If we want to nip this in the bud, as a globe, we have to be able to achieve net zero carbon emissions, right? So that means, uh -huh, let's get there. So now that means the amount of carbon emissions that we're putting out there into the atmosphere, we have to be able to balance with the amount of carbon emissions that we're then taking out. Mm. So we need to start investing more in clean energy and changing the way in which we operate and we live. The good news from this report that was highlighted by brilliant scientists, over 200 scientists, 14,000 studies, mm. the good news is it's not too late for humanity. Okay. But the bad news is a lot of these changes are are irreversible. Whether we like it or not, in our lifetime, this climate is going to warm um, by 1.5 degrees Celsius, which wow. is the max, wow. is the max that the, the Paris Climate Change Agreement has said that we'd be able to cope with um, in humanity. Even with that, Aaron and Ekene, the kind of changes that we would be seeing in society we don't even want to think about it. We'll be looking back to the floods that we experienced two weeks ago here in Lagos, and we'll be saying, wow, those were the good old days. Oh, my. Yeah. I, I don't want to seem like the bearer of bad news. But when, <laughs> when we look at the way uh, globally we've responded to the pandemic, where you know, everyone is every, every nation for itself, do you have much hope that globally the, the richer countries that contribute more to pollution will take the greater responsibility? So here's the thing. They have to step up and it's time to do so. Ahead of COP26, the UN Climate Change Conference in Glasgow um, going on later on this year, there are a lot of conversations that are already happening. So the G7 have said that yearly, they made this pledge back in the last decade, that yearly they will contribute $100 billion in climate financing every year. But they fell short of that goal every single year. Now, the general goal that we need um, to raise in terms of climate finance if we actually want to be at a level where we can still survive in this earth is about four trillion dollars which is about triple what we're currently raising in terms of climate finance oh, now okay. the biggest looks bummer like is out of time this is the conversation we need to come you need to come back to the part <laughs> yes. i'll be back yes. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you for your time <laughs>